welcome to patch 1.0 of World of Tanks. Today we focus on Abbey, or actually the unbalanced climbing map that Abbey always was and now definitely is once more. First up, E6. The, as I like to call it, crossfit climb. This climb requires you to take the stairs, but we don't have legs, so we smash into the stairs hard enough to get up. And I wonder if that also works in real life. I've tried to climb this with like all the fast tanks, the bad chat, the LTTB and everything, but at the end of the day only the Rheimatal Panzer Wagon was able to get up for me. Next up we have the F6 approach. This is the new way of going to the castle. It's just way harder and more finicky. I tried it so many times and it's absolutely 100% not consistent. Here we see the F6 north approach. This one is way easier, but it's also useless in a way, because why would you ever take this approach? It's impractical or heck even impossible to do in a standard battle. I reverse to gain more speed to get past a really annoying cliff. This guy just wants to push you down, as you can almost see. I just needed to hug the wall way more than I used to do, and then I finally did it. And voila, you're in the abbey. And of course, I've been at almost every corner and invisible wall there is, and I just want to make sure that you guys feel like I've tried it all, you know? So, yeah, we've been with the train to all the different kind of areas on the map and just tried to get on top of the cliff, on top of the rocks, on top of the invisible walls, but yeah. And I'm just showing these clips just so you can see that I don't want to intentionally leave things out. I just... I really wanted to get up everywhere. Here's C3, in between the rocks. Once you're up this climb, you'll notice that there are a lot of bushes to hide in. It, it, just no cover. So I wonder how useful this would ever be. Perhaps good enough to spot from? Well, if it's any good, then it's nothing compared to the overpowered climb that I like to call D3 OP. This climb is moderately easy, if you know how to do it. I'll explain this later in the video, if you want to skip to that part, just click on the link in the video description. This climb has basically everything. Excellent shooting angles, it has all the bushes in the world, it has all the cover in the world, it's so insanely good. Previously it wasn't possible to get up this ridge without a mouse, or at least so I thought. Now with the new HD maps, we have this monstrosity that is D3 OP. Completely out of place and makes this map more favored for the goats among us. The clan wars and strongholds on this map will never be the same. Even if you haven't practiced this at all, it's possible to push a tank up with only two other tanks. Let's wait for the Super Conqueror camp on D3 in the clan war, shall we? Next up we have K4. This was one of those old climbing camping positions, well not necessarily a climbing position, but just a camping position to keep an eye on the cap and lock down any capping potential. So I'm glad to say it has returned. Now you can camp with even greater advantage as you can have more cover and more bushes. Oh boy, what a time to be alive with the HD maps. They keep on giving aren't they? And of course, the 9-0 climbs or whatever you want to call it, you have to swim like a submarine to the other side and we tried to do it on the HD maps to see how far we could go and if we could still reach the other side. But alas, the other side, it's too steep to go up. No. So yep, you're stuck there. And you're there. And of course we tried it in, in another position, like F9. We went downwards and uh, tried with multiple tanks to reach the other side, but nope, it was just way too steep. This is the part how I explain how you get up D3. Basically, you avoid the rocks left and right of the starting position. You can jump over the rock at the bottom and it won't stop you, as I will show you in the upcoming examples. Follow the green guidelines. Notice that every tank has its own true line, because 
the differences in terrain resistances, weight, width, length and top speed and a couple other things. This is just a general approach of how your line should look like. If you did everything correctly, you'll get up. Now, the first example is the AMX 13105. The primary tank characteristic I want to highlight is the top speed. With the new climbing, well, with the new HD maps and the new way of climbing, you basically want top speed in order to bump into rocks and get yourself on top of like mountains and whatever. This is not about um, tank traverse as much as I don't know tank uh, ground resistances. It's more top speed and just bumping into rocks as fast as you can, so you can gain height or get to certain elevations. And with the AMX 13105 you have 68 kilometers an hour as a top speed and as you can see in the video you have some of the best shooting angles on the middle, on the base, on the 1-2 line, it's just amazing. What I further want to highlight is that because of the top speed is so important, if you have less top speed the climb comes harder and, and more technical. With things like the bed jet, the 105, the ram top monster wagon, you can just make errors in a way you can't do that with the, I don't know, Lorraine 40T or a Cromwell. You just can't make errors that way because you don't have the speed to sacrifice that error into like height. <laughs> Next up, TVP. One of those tanks that it's really hard and finicky that you have to uh, approach it at the right angle and gain altitude from the from actually the rock, the last rock that you will bump into with your side. And that angle is really precise. Tanks like the LTTP they turn really fast, so you have to have your approach lined up before you're at the climb itself. And then just use your speed as you can see. It makes the climb almost trivial. And with every tank you have a certain line as you also can see with the Lorraine 40T. It's also really hard to get that top speed going and yeah, some tanks are just way harder than other tanks, but it's still possible. And I didn't even need that long for each tank but I advise everyone if you want to climb with your tank on top of D3 just make sure you practice it in a training room because it's not one two three go up it's more like one two four five fail what why is it not working and then you rage and break your keyboard and <coughs> you know take your time relax have fun in the training room and if you need any help just feel free to ask me and as you can see, even the E25, the cockroach, it can get up D3, so that will be a really nasty surprise for everyone. And even the Black Bulldog was able to get up. And I don't have a Black Bulldog, so I just wanted to show you that he made it. If you've noticed, I'm working down the tier list um, from tier 10 down to tier like 5, what is it? And just to show you that it's not just possible with the high tier tanks, it's also possible with the lower tier stuff. And I reckon that's quite important for, well, most of my viewers because they don't have a bed jet or they don't have a 105 or a Rhyme Top Panzer Wagon. So, yeah, there you go. Even with a T37. I know it runs Cola, but you don't need Cola. You don't need. You don't actually need a very good crew or, well, a crew at all. As you can see here with my Cromwell, <laughs> I even got like that, that stupid stuff on my uh, mounted on my tank. And the crew is like very poor. And basically, after I guess 12 tries, I was able to get up and get the perfect line, as you can see with the Cromwell, and I made it. So, even in the tier 6 stronghold, you guys know what to do, right? You can get up if you are a north spawner on Abbey, go up D3 and have some fun. And because the Cromwell isn't the most popular tank, Kappa, we also have the Type 64. And I reckon this is way easier because the Type 64 goes faster than the Cromwell, which gives you like more uh, wiggle room. And also with the T67. The T67 has like the worst crew of all, 75%. And as you can see, 
with the nice line. It's almost a Kuma line, but it just lacks the speed, I feel. <laughs> it just needed a little bit of wiggling to get up. And there you have it. If you have ever wondered what a climbing session looked like without all the climbs working, well, here's the perfect example. We have people driving at the same place, trying the same climbs at the same time, <laughs> bumping into each other, usually we just take turns, uh, wait for each other, and but generally this is just a mess. Stuff doesn't work, we don't get up, uh, frustration, uh, you know, all the regular stuff that comes with a climbing, uh, or like the preparation for a climbing video. If you're interested in joining, we have a climbing discord where you can join us and here we'll arrange training rooms and talk about climbs and, and much more. Just, just click on the link in the video description, join the discord and... Dog. <laughs> Be happy, you know? You got this. I got so infuriated by the LC, it, it just didn't work. For some reason I couldn't get up, the, the tank just turns super fast and it's very lightweight. Which are just the characteristics you don't want for climbing. It's hard to get the right approach when the tank turns too fast and when it's too light it doesn't keep its momentum at all and as you can see it doesn't work. So what we decide is we just push the ELC up. I don't care that it doesn't get up by itself, it's up! <laughs> Easy! A little nudge in the butt and there we go. So, we're at the end of the video. You might be wondering, where can I climb? Well, we found nothing of use in the areas lined red. And we do found some serious potential in the green areas. We've got 67 climbs depending if it's possible to get up into the abbey from the north. I almost made it, but the climb just looks... eh. If anyone feels like they're up to the task, feel free to let me know how it went. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Have a great day, and remember... Some climbing each day keeps wargaming nerves away. Thank you,